Thank you for coming to watch Dr. Smith's video today. We encourage you to hit the subscribe button and the alert button. That way you can get notifications when he uploads a new video. Thank you for coming today. So we hope you take the time to hear and think about it. And if you have a book, read in the book about the concept and the topics that we talk about. They have a lasting effect. The intent is not necessarily to treat pain, but to make permanent long-term correction with your whole family and your friends. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe and hit the alert button. Have a good day. Have a good day. But you only have a small amount, a small bowl, a small plate. You get one or two items maximum. Maximum two items per meal. So a meal might be, your 10 o'clock meal might be half an avocado. And because they don't want to throw it away, your four o'clock meal could be the yeah, other yeah. half. <laughs> so that will make a huge difference. I would also recommend that you take the digestive enzyme and probably the OptiGI for the OptiGI for a long time to help rebuild new healthy cells. So I'm going to say a little more. I had a, a lady come here. It's been more than two years ago now. She weighed well over 350, and I told her I checked her and I told her she was headed for. Or, death soon and she was starving to death now she couldn't believe that i would say that that she would be starving by with her having that much weight i didn't know at the time but i found out that she, because it was hard for her to get around the kitchen and do things and it was just her and her husband they almost every meal was a microwaved meal that they bought at the grocery store. So she had almost zero nutrients. So she's filling up. She died within six months. She died in the hospital with a lot of complications. So back to what to do. When you eat, how much water should you drink? The, the answer is the least necessary. Small amounts of water. Ideal is none. It depends on the food. Sometimes your wife will overcook and your food will be dried <laughs> out a little bit. And so you, you'll need, you'll benefit. Not, um, you're not going to do that. Uh, no. <laughs> so so, so you, you would benefit from having that water added. So you sip. That's what you do. If you, if you need water, sip it. Okay, just enough. Then go to the next part. So, how long before a meal and after a meal? Typically, I like to say about about twenty minutes both ways, yeah. and and about four ounces give or take a few ounces. You want to first. Of all, you want to make sure that if you can, that the stomach is empty. When you drink. Minutes, when you eat. When you eat. Okay. So, the, so the, the four ounces that you drink before is kind of like washing it out, getting it ready. Then after you eat, if you're thirsty, then you can have a little bit more. If you're thirsty, it's because you ate incorrect, incorrectly, overcooked, dried out, too much salt, too much sugar, too, too much something didn't chew it enough and you didn't chew it enough so your body wants a little bit of help to break it down so we talked about the blood flow last week we're going to kind of talk about that today a bit but you know the red for the red blood cells to pack a nutrient down to the end distribution in the capillary you can't have a chunk of carrot Okay. It needs to be broken all the way down to the 
molecular level, and that takes a lot of special events that happen in the GI tract automatically. And remember, you, you don't have to think about that. That's, that's a gift to you from God. Your gut knows what to do, and your gut, your gut will digest different foods depending on their composition. Now, some of you have seen Deborah, and she have told you to eat protein first. Protein, think of protein as a, a building, building block. The most important reason you eat, by principle, is to nurture the body. Now, I know you get confused. You go to a social and you eat because it's the thing to do. You, see, you, you sit and you eat and you talk and you eat things you shouldn't eat and you talk about things you shouldn't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so you're and, doing two things you're not supposed to do. Eat what you're not supposed to and talk about things. And, and you ask somebody <laughs> with the loudest faith or ask God to perform a miracle and make this stuff good, nurture, nurture our body. <laughs> and if I eat protein first in the morning, then I don't crave sweets as much. If I eat sugar of any kind, then the whole day it's, I want sugar. Is that based on fat or is that just it, meat? That's what happens to you? Yeah. You think you're the long ranger? Oh no. No, that's <laughs> the way it is for everybody. That's why you mm -hmm. eat protein first. Uh, only a small amount to, to build the body. Now, protein is building blocks. I'm going to toss out to you today a, a copy of a blood test. When they do a blood test, they look for protein in the blood. What they, are they supposed to look for? Well, I'll tell you in a few minutes. They okay. measure the amount of protein. They also measure the amount of sugar. Protein builds, okay? Sugar is fuel, period. Yeah. Sugar is like the little pig that went out and built his house out of what? That's straw. Straw. He didn't have a good house. He had a temporary shelter, but he didn't have a good house. When you, when you feed your body mostly carbohydrates and, and, or sugar, and that's how it arranged. When I say sugar, I'm talking about the stuff that comes from the sugar beet, sugar cane, the white finished end product. I'm not talking about a pear, peach, and apple. Carrots. That, that's a carbohydrate, okay? And it takes a carbohydrate longer to break down. That's the key. It, the more complex the product is by divine design in nature, the slower it breaks down. We want, we want a constant source of fuel. Is that why we eat a fruit rather than drink fruit juice? Because yes. It has fiber and something to break down and it doesn't go straight through? Yes. Okay. Now, fat is also a fuel. That fat burns very slow. I'm going to dry your picture. I may have done this before, but I'm going to do it again. If we have a cubic centimeter, this is not a centimeter, but you get the idea. Sugar, protein, fat. The value of that quantity of sugar is a four. Protein, would equal a five, more value. Fat would be equal to a nine. So when you, when you think about eating, you want, you want protein, a little bit of carbohydrate, and a lot of fat. So if we do, let me give you a couple of numbers. Carbohydrate would be about a 25.
calories, protein about 35, and fat about 40, 45. So during any meal, <clears throat> be liberal with fat. So that's like all the, uh, what do you call them, the green, green things? Pardon? Fat. What's the good fat? Avocados. There are a lot of good fats. Most, most of the fats. God made a lot of good fats. Avocados. Nuts. Oil, uh, olives. All, all, all the nuts have fat in them. If, uh, if you're in the dairy, I, I know they recommend the, not your, that you not drink milk as a, a, a roll, but you eat a lot of butter and whipping cream. Mm. You got a lot of calories out of that. So Dr. Smith, are those numbers percentage of your meal? Pardon? Are those the numbers you put on there, 25, 35, 45, are those percentage? That's <coughs> the amount of calories. calories. Contained in the same quantity. So if I, if I eat a little sugar cube of sugar, I get 25 calories. Got it. If I have a chunk of fat off a of steak and hamburger, I get 9 calories. And it burns very slow. <clears throat> When you go camping, some of you used to do that, you sh shred up the wood. The shredded up stuff is what you start the fire with. The bigger wood is what burns longer. If you had coal, it burns even longer than wood. Okay, I'm getting off track. So, the basic fundamentals of weight management is to stay within tissue tolerance for the gut. The gut should be the big guide, not the eyes, not the marketers, not the, tongue. Not the fragrance What? Not the tongue. Not the tongue. <laughs> My wife made some really good soup yesterday. And I said to her, the bad thing about this soup is, it's so good, that it makes me want to eat more than it should. <laughs> so you have to stop this <clears throat> the next principle. When you reach satiety, when you're satisfied, when you're satisfied, stop. Now, most of you older people won't be able to do that because you've been trained to clean up your plate. Clean up the plate. We'll have to send it to the people in China. China, that's the story <laughs> I heard over and over and over. The kids in China are seven. Clean up, I said, send it to China. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any well, questions it takes, about it? it takes time to be satisfied. If you eat fast, you're <clears> still not satisfied. You have to eat slow, like you said, 20 minutes or so before the satiety value is reached. It right? reads, yes. And when you've reached that, you're done. Whether your plate's clean or not. It's nothing to do with your plate. <laughs> if you're done, you're done. You're done. So you can, you can look at it this way. It's going to that waist or this waist, one or the other. You know, COVID helped with that because it killed your appetite and your taste buds because everything tasted like cardboard. So nothing tasted good and it was easy to quit early. I lost five pounds because I quit early. <laughs> good. Which is a good thing. Yeah. I think I covered most of the basics. We're going to have it. I'll pass the test out in a few minutes. We'll cover a few more, but now we're going to change topics and go to the lymphatic system. <clears throat> Why do I talk about the lymphatic system? Reason number one, because I want you to have a greater appreciation for your God design body so that you have more trust when things go awry, when you have a challenge or a condition, because the world has been dumbed down, another word would be brainwashed, we've been falsely educated, 
by manufacturers, marketers, merchants to eat things that are classified as food and they're not they're not designed by God. They're modified and manipulated by evil and conspiring men who have no interest in you at all. They're interested in profit. Now, you might say, well, why doesn't the government do something about that? Well, honestly, the government doesn't care. In fact, the government's in favor of them doing what they do. Why? Because if you can die, early, <coughs> if you can die at 65, they go, there's another one, we don't have to be so security. Yeah. There's another one that's not on Medicare. So they don't really have an interest in you and I. You and I have to kind of defend for ourselves. And the way we do that is to become more educated. And I believe that education intensifies faith. And like I say in my book, the greater your belief in something that's true, the greater the power. <clears throat> now, if you wanted to, you could start a talk in sacrament meeting without praise. The greater your belief in the Savior, the greater value to Him in your life. The greater you, your belief in Him. And the less you believe, the less influence you will have. So we're talking about universal laws and principles. Okay, the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system goes everywhere in the body. Everywhere. Last week we talked about blood. I, give, give you a, I showed you a handout that showed a capillary. Now blood goes to a capillary single file. And I told you I didn't like that picture, but that's why I had. I found a better picture that shows what I wanted to show. And that is the lymphatic system. So I'd like you to look at the lymphatic system. Did they give you one or more? I have more here. Let's go then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, the red, the red <clears throat> is arteries. <clears throat> What do arteries do? They carry, they carry red blood cells and nutrients to the capillaries. And the blood is moved primarily through by circular muscles after it leaves the arteries. It's in the arterioles, it's down to the capillaries. Now we're in the capillary bed and the, the nutrients go out. The cell function, the tissue function, puts the garbage out in the interstitial fluid and the body will then suck up the toxins and take them up to the lungs. Some of the toxins are too big to get back into the venules after they leave the capillaries. That's where the lymphatic system comes into play. Yeah. Lymph is plasma. The leak out of the blood stream. The body makes about a gallon and a half of lymph fluid every day. Most of it goes back into the blood. Only about a third or less stays in the lymphatic system. Now, if you look at that picture really close, you'll notice that the green, the green vessels, the green vessels are the lymphatic system. Think of them as vacuums. You go to the car wash and you get a vacuum, you just suck, right? That's what the, that's what these, these open-ended tubes are sucking particles and fluid that is too large to get in the 
then you'll, that's the blue, to go back up to the lungs. Fair enough? So plasma and lymphatic fluid are almost identical. They kind of move back and forth. What does lymph do? Cleans. Cleans. Janitor. Janitor. It's a janitor. I say, I'd say it's like the home. The husband should feed or be the provider, and the wife cleans up. <laughs> Until you get smart, and then you help the wife clean, right? <laughs> you want your legs to be on you, do you? So, now, <laughs> along, along the channels of the lymphatic system, as it's flowing toward the heart. And all lymph fluid flows toward the heart all the time. It's one way. They have valves in them. You can see this picture at the bottom shows a valve. That valve is so the lymphatic fluid can't go back down. It only moves toward the heart. In that system, God put cleaning, cleaning devices. They're called lymph nodes. Now in the past we've talked about the wonderful creation of the human body and the fact that God made the human body with a lot of extra potential. Two kidneys, we only need one. I don't want need half of one. Five lungs, we can live on one. Liver, five lobes. So when you think of the lymphatic system, this is not a trick question, but it's a question. Do you think God put a few or a lot of lymph nodes? A lot. How many would you're a cleaner. How many would you put in the body? A cleaner? You're, well, I put many, several in every room. Uh, how, <laughs> many, how many lymph nodes would you put in the body? Yeah, it looks like lots. Lots and lots. I have no idea. Oh, yes. 155 in every... Low. Oh, low? Low? 25. No, you're low. <laughs> you're too low. Oh, I'm too low. Thousands. You're a little bit high. <laughs> 500. Low. The body has about eight, about about 800 lymph nodes. Now they're small. They're all about a lymph node could fit between the ends of those two pieces of paper. That's about how big they are. They're they're almost round. Okay, that's Is that about what these are right here. Pardon? These? The yeah. nose, the left nose. Yeah. They're these. Now, when, when I, when you think of a lymph node, think, think like it's a minute <laughs> garbage disposal, like having it in your sink. You put some stuff in your sink and you wash it, turn it on, whoosh, it sh shreds it up. Lymph nodes, the little tiny lymph nodes, shred up the garbage, and some of it, some of it, goes back into the uh, blood flow. It leaks. Okay, the lymph system leaks. I told you, it, you can make about uh, about four gallons a day, and it only keeps about one, a little, a little more than one. There's always more lymph in the body than blood. But it moves very, very slowly. Now last week we talked about the blood, the heart, and how much blood the heart moves every day. Remember that number? We take a third of a cup and we do it enough to get how many gallons? 2,000. Yes. 2,000 gallons of blood go through the heart every day a third of a cup at a time. The lymph fluid only drains about a 
quart and a half. So it moves very slowly. And it's processed all the way up. When it gets up to the top, it dumps into the, it's called the vena cava, the right side of the heart. And then it goes into the lungs and the lungs gets rid of some of the poison. That's happening right now. It's amazing. It's, a, it's incredible. It's very, very, and it goes 24-7. Okay, let's talk for a couple of minutes about the types of cells that are in the lymph fluid, that are flowing around. Where, this is a question. Where are cells made? Bone marrow. In the bone, bone marrow. They're called what? Stem, stem, stem cells. cells. They're called stem cells. A stem cell is like a, a basic Well, I said it this way, a, a stem cell is like a 18 year old kid who puts his mission papers in. And he basically says, I'll go where you want me to go, I'll do what you want me to do. That's what stem cells do. Stem cells can become whatever is needed. Whatever you need at, at the time. Would you pass that on? Today we're talking mostly about the lymphatic system, so we're going to talk right now about the stem cells that are directed to become white blood cells. So that's a whole group of cells that when you have a blood test and you do a differential test on the blood, they, they, they count up white blood cells. Now the white blood cells, again like missionaries, they they become sparse white. Our grandson right now who went to South America and he's speaking Portugal. I have a patient who came <coughs> yesterday and her son is going went to Madagascar. T totally different. The white blood cells do different things. Now, I'd like you to look on this. This is an actual blood report. Look down at the white blood cells. The white blood cell count. Then right underneath that white blood cell, there was five different types of white blood cells that are specialized. The first one is called a neutrophil. Now, that's a that's a that's a type of white blood cell that in our language today would be a first responder. If you get attacked by a bacteria, by a virus, a fungus, it just Johnny on the spot, Nutrivel is there. And his job is to identify and to attack and to destroy. Right behind them come the next one, lymphocytes. They're slower, but they have more power. Then you have the monocytes. The monocytes kind of come along and clean up and identify the invading organism. We call it a terrorist to the body. And they recognize that terrorist. They remember, oh, that terrorist comes to town again, and they see him, they say, we need to attack right now. And then you have the basophils. The basophils, are, there are fewer of them, but they go around, they go looking around the body for big problems like that are chronic like cancer if they find a cancer cell they will attack and destroy if they can now why did i tell you that i told you that because god by divine design gave you several different types of blood cells 
that are specifically have specific assignments to do a certain things. Question, when do they come? Answer, they're always present. So if you go over to the right side of this paper and you look at the range, the range, there's always white blood cells, four to 12. There's always neutrophils, 43 to 76. So, so the neutrophils are the first responders, remember? I told you that. So they're always looking around, but they're looking for trouble. They want to catch it early. And then the numbers go down. So when we get to the basal fields, there's only a couple of them, but they're very powerful. Now, in the past in classes, I've talked to you about the, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Well, I, I thought today would bring it down to a local level. If you had a gang moving, to, a gang came into your neighborhood tonight, you had about eight or ten ruffians come into your neighborhood and they started to do <coughs> damage to somebody's property. Who would you call? Police at neutral house. Police? Mm -hmm. The city police. police. Yeah, the and the, the, you get two cops. Quick, right? Mm -hmm. And what do they get there? There's more, more than <clears throat> of them than there are of us. They would then call the county sheriff and they would come. And if you need more help, they call the state police. Okay? And if they, if they keep fighting, then they call in the National Guard. So we, we have a local system set up to do that. Yesterday in class, oh, I said, who would they call? Minister. Oh. 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 teacher. <laughs> the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Smith and Wesson. What? Smith and Wesson. Yeah, Smith and Wesson. That's what I was going to say. I call my son. <laughs> yeah. I have, you didn't say anything about Eosinophils, are they included in this little war battle thing? Yeah, eosinophils, I can't read my writing very well. Eosinophils get into organs. So do the monocytes. If a, yeah, a problem exists in the blood, the monocytes go after them. If the virus and fungus get out into the tissue, they change. The monocytes change, they become like what's called a macrophage. Some of you have had the blood test, and you see that on you see that in the blood. And if you're lucky, you'll watch one of those. You might have a small bacteria, and the microphages will attack it right there on the on the screen. Have you any, have you seen that? Mm -hmm. Like pet mats. Not like pet they, 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 they wrap it. around it. They wrap around it and destroy it. While we're here, let's go up on this blood test just a little tiny bit. Go, go up and find the word protein, total protein. Total protein on this page of this day was 6.9. What's the range? 6.382. So that tells me that this patient has a few bricks, but would heal better if they had more bricks. So they're not getting the proper amount of protein and the blood from digestion and from that nutrition. <clears throat> so they would need to modify their diet and support the digestive system to end up with more protein in the blood. Now another one I like to look at is down in a couple, it's called alkaline phosphatase. Alkaline phosphatase happens to be one of those things that is more evident with a higher number that the body is currently breaking down. Now, you know, we do the regular tests and see how your blood pressure changes when you send up. This is another good thing to look at. This patient has 50, the range is 38 to 126. So this normal turnover Okay, it's within the range, it's on the low end. At that number, today we're 
125, then we know that the person is breaking down too fast. Okay, <clears throat> so where do we go from here? <clears throat> Wait, but they've got to the test step. Let's go to the test. Is that alkaline phosphatase on all blood tests, or do you have to ask that one? This is a standard, That's routine, a standard. simple blood test. It's not a liver test, it's not a liver, kidney, it's a routine test. Now again, the basic concept is this. All of the things that are measured should be there all the time. And there's a range that's acceptable. And if one goes high, like sometimes we'll have a person who will have a high count because we have, we have a lot of need for maybe the neutrophils. And we need, might have also high eosinophils. That means that there's an allergic reaction going on and the, and the, the, the body is active. Just like when you have a swollen lymph node. You have, to have a swollen lymph node that you can feel. You'll only be able to feel the big ones in the, in the common where places where several of these vessels come together. If you find a lymph node that's enlarged, tight, sore, leave it alone. Don't rub it, don't try to massage it, leave it alone. If you could do anything, drink more water, move more like on the T-zone, and get more rest. Period. What are the chances of a lymph node being cancerous? Less than 2%. So that means you, not, you don't need to worry about it. When would you worry? You would worry if it got bigger, got hot, got painful, then you might need some help medically to help clean it. But most of the time, the body will do it on its own. Um, okay, back to, let's go to the test. Number one, thanks to genetic engineers and modern food processing techniques, we have better, much better food than our grandparents. False. False. I called Deborah when I wrote this test and said, Deborah, do you have any recommendations? She said, yeah, Tom, they ate the stuff the grandma ate. She said to what? Eat the things your grandmother oh, ate. Oh, yes. What they eat? Whole, ripe, raw, fresh fruits and vegetables in season, and meat sparingly. <coughs> what kind of meat? All kinds. Whole variety. Fish, chicken, pigs, deer, elk. Two, due to large regulation of evil and conspiring man, a no love of money, our grocery stores are being filled with addictive, toxic, non-nutritious products marketed as food. True. True. Three, much like in the Three Little Pigs, a story we can choose what we use to build our bodies with. True. True. What should you eat first? Protein. That's number four. Protein first. Do you need carbohydrates? Yes. How much? About 20% of your diet. Do you need fat? Yes. About 40% of your diet. Do you need water? Yes, you have to have water. Now, one of the major causes of lymphatic problems is dehydration. Oh. Minerals. That's, minerals are, are in quantity the smallest thing we consume. But if you, if you do any cooking, the minerals are like the seasonings. 
they, they make a big, big difference. And by divine design, God puts real salt on every continent in the world. Real salt is the most convenient natural source of minerals. If you get trapped by some nutritionists, they say, oh, you're low on magnesium. You need to take magnesium. Well, scientifically, that doesn't work because if you put a single mineral on its own and attached to the things that it comes with naturally, you drive another mineral out. You change one problem for another problem. By divine design, fruits are designed to clean the body. Fruits. Different fruits clean different organs. Most clean a couple. Vegetables build. They have a little bit of protein. How much? Not very much. How about grains, seeds and nuts? Do they have fat? Yes. How much? Not a lot. How about protein? Yeah, they have protein. When I was a boy on the farm, we used to take our wheat to the first mill and elevator. They would always take a sample of the wheat and they would, they would measure the protein in that wheat. We got paid not by the bushel, but by the protein percent of the, of the grains. Mm -hmm. We got punished by if it was too wet. It had to be ripe and dry. Five, lack of adequate water, lack of body motion, and lack of sleep are the three main causes of being overweight. True. Now, a lot of women get trapped into thinking that I'm getting fat because I eat too much. And it's not that at all. It's because they're tired. When you get tired from lack of sleep, the body says to the brain, we need more. We need more. We need more nutrition. And if you eat more than you could tolerate, you get less, so you get tired, and you get hungry. Mm. The body contains more lymphatic fluid than blood, sure. but it moves much slower. Sure. How much? If you put a ratio number, you would put the number 2,000 to 1.5. That's the difference. That's a lot of difference. Very slow. Denise is a massage therapist. She'll never tell you I'm going to do a lymphatic massage. Why? She, because she knows she can, it's going to do what it's going to do. So when you're told that by a massage therapist, you smile and lay down and shut up and let them do the thing. <laughs> we get down, drink some water, and go stand in your tea zone to flush it out. She, she may stir it up, but she won't push it out. Uh, number nine, like water intake and like emotion contribute to a toxic lymph system. That's true. Number seven and eight. What? Seven and eight. Uh, seven and eight. The primary purpose of the lymphatic system is to feed tissue. Mm -hmm. False. Cleans. Cleans. That's what it does. Eight. Stem cells are the body's raw material, cells from which other cells with specialized functions are generated and can potentially be used to rebuild restore, replace, and regenerate where needed. True. Yeah. Now, Optimal Health has a product called OptiMagna Stem. This is a product that <coughs> nourishes the bones to help <coughs> them make more healthy stem cells. I personally think this is one of the best products that could be used off and on for the rest of our lives. To, to help make better bones. With better bones, you make better stem cells. If you know anybody that has osteoporosis, the, 
the little pickles of bone, the long bones, that's big ones. Yeah, if you have osteoporosis, then the bone as an organ can produce as many and as healthy stem cells. You want to strengthen the bone. If you stand on the T zone and you get that up and down motion, that creates a natural response to build bone. I have a question about osteoporosis. Yep. If you're diagnosed with that, does that mean your whole body or can you have a weak, say, spine or and strong legs? Uh, is it universal or is it just pinpointed or how do that's they do that? A, that's, a, that's a perfect question. I, my answer would be this. The areas that would have the most osteoporosis would be the areas that have the least quality and quantity of nerve and blood flow. It's possible that you can have worse osteoporosis in one leg than the other, in the spine rather than the leg. You might have arthritis and osteoporosis in the fingers because they have a pinched nerve in the neck and shoulder, and that time does not get enough nutrition. A quick side note, when I was in high school, I had an athlete's foot on my left foot. And I go to play football and basketball and stuff and go to the, you know, I was always worried that somebody else would get my athlete's foot and I'd get banned from the team. But it never got in my right foot. Now that raises the question. A two-year-old doctor would ask, why? Nerve impingement. What? I would say nerve impingement. That's exactly right. And I didn't know that until I went on the mission. I had went to Carpenter and Lee's all the way And he said, you're back, you're a little back home my stuff. But I said, no, no, it's been that way for a long time. I, you know, it hurts all the time. And he treated me a few times. And my athletes were cleared up. I thought, wow. <laughs> so I went around saying chiropractic fixes up its foot. But it didn't, they fixed my body and my body fixes. Yeah. I didn't know about that stuff then. But then swollen lymph nodes and the fear are indications that the body's defense system are being activated. True. Is fever good? <coughs> Yes, if the, if the body has a fever, just like, just like if the body has elevated blood pressure, if it has a fever, it <coughs> needs, needs a fever. The body says, hey, we have something in here, and the white blood cells with all these specialties, they need some help. So we're gonna, cha we're gonna change the environment. So we have, we have, Chairs in the neighborhood with the police and the, you know, and what we really need is a thunderstorm. <laughs> we need to change the environment. We need a snow a snowstorm. We need to change the environment significantly so the body generates heat and creates a fever. So I, does a fever kill cells or bad bad cells or what's the purpose of the fever? I mean, I don't know. Okay, change that question to a statement. Fever kills bad cells. True. <laughs> okay. okay. Why not the good cells? Because good cells are tougher. They're healthier. Yeah, they have more capacity to tolerate different temperatures. So when you feed your kid aspirin because he's got a, a fever, well, you don't feed kids aspirin anymore, but you used to, uh, then you're doing the damage because you're it's right. balance. That's right. So, so what do you do with a kid with a fever? Put him in a hot tub of water. True. Why? To it's help the, right the body do what the body's trying to do. Right. How hot? Hot enough. What? Hot enough. How does he stand? What? How does he stand? Don't breathe. <laughs> How long do you live there? Till they sweat. 
till they sweat on the eyebrows. So you can get, they get them out. If they stay hot for more than 30 minutes, put them back in. I don't want to go back in. Well, you're, you're, you're going back in. Because we're, we're going to want, to want to get this problem solved today, not let it linger. Now, all of you have had friends, you've probably done it yourself. You've come down with cold or flu or something. You almost get over it and they get sick. You almost get over it and they get sick. You almost get over it and get sick. Why? You're doing the wrong thing. You're trying to, you think I'm like a, you're thinking wrong, okay? You're not thinking like God designed the body and we just need to help the body do what it's trying to do. Eleven. Now, underline the first letter of each of those cells. Neutrophil N L M E B. Never let monkeys eat bananas. <laughs> <laughs> They're always present. You saw that on the this test. They're always present. They're always looking for trouble. Just like our local law enforcement people. They're there. You don't always see them, but they're there. And they do what? Stand ready to recognize, attack, and destroy. Number 12, there are approximately 800 lymph nodes in an adult. True. Mm -hmm. 13, when the fever reaches 103, it's always best to take Tylenol aggressively attempt to lower body temperatures to 98.6. Oh. So what do you do? Put them in the hot tub. Heat them up. Now, which is better? Hot tub, a shower, hot tub. sauna, steam, hot tub. Why hot tub? Because in the hot tub you have the, the concentration of the water is more dense. It does more good. If you think of our soldiers who went to Afghanistan, it's 125 degrees or 130 degrees. How can they tolerate 130 degree temperature? Because it's air. Could you put them, would they tolerate 135 degree water? No way. If it's on, water is 114, it will get in. Too hot, same temperature, different density of the surrounding. So about what the temperature, what should the temperature be if you have 103 fever? As long as you can comfortably tolerate it. So if you had a thermometer, I would start out at 105. Because a child, you, you know, their little skin is tender. And That's fine, they've been living in a hot mom. <laughs> Okay, so if you go to, if you go to a hotel, a fancy hotel that has hot tub, how hot do you think the water is? 110, 120. What? 110, 120. No. 104. 104. Why? Oh, a hot tub. Did you say hot tub or hotel? Hot. If you go to a hotel that has a hot tub. Okay. How hot is the water in the hot tub? Well, they've told me 110, 120. They, they, they lied. They lied. <laughs> they lied. Yeah. No, you would not get in it. The health department would close them down. It's too hot too for hot. the average cat. Mm. Not that we're putting cats in the water. But... <laughs> no. These are for you to experiment with your grandkids and your spouse. They'd work. And we're done. Thank you for being there. Thank you. Hope this helps you a lot.